Okay, so last time we got the information displaying in our profile, and if we navigate to the edit profile fragment here, it's also displaying the correct information. We have the photo it's pulling from the database, uh, name, description, website, all that good stuff, email, phone number. Um, so that's all cool. Um, now I guess what I forgot to do, or mentioned that I was going to do, because I think I said I was going to start working on the images, is we need to actually be able to save these changes. So I, when I click this check mark, I need it to actually submit the new information on the screen to the database. So that's what we're going to work on in this one. Okay, so let's go into our edit profile fragment here, and we can delete this method. And let's create a new method. So it's new private void save profile settings. And let's go and make some notes here. So retrieves the data contained in the widgets and submits it to the database. Before doing so, it checks to make sure the username chosen is unique. Because uh, like I mentioned in previous videos, that's one thing about Instagram is that the usernames that the users have have to be unique. Because if you're searching for somebody, you need to have a unique username or else you're gonna get a bunch of options popping up. So let's create a bunch of fields. So display name equals display name get text to string. And I'll explain why these are final in a, in a minute here. Get text to string and string website. Oops, equals website. Get text to string and description. Description. Get text to string and email equals final. Oops, string email. String email equals email. Get text to string. And final long phone number equals long parse parse long uh, phone number get text to string. Okay, so now we need to do uh, an add a listener for a single value event. So it's just going to be a single event we check the database on. Uh, if comparatively to the other listener that we've been using, the one down here, this one is always listening. It's constantly listening for changes. This one is just gonna listen once. So value event listener. So I guess the we're gonna have two cases here. Case one, the user did not change their username, which is easy. And then case two, the user changed their username. Therefore, we need to check for uniqueness. If that's how you spell uniqueness, I think so. So the first case is very simple, right? Like we're just, he he changed some other settings um, that weren't the username, in which case we don't need to worry because the other stuff doesn't matter if it's unique. The email matters, but that's, oh yes, the email matters. So we'll need to also check the email. We need to check the, the username and the email to see if they're unique. So the first case is gonna be easy. Um, it's just gonna be, uh, just you're just gonna insert the new data basically, that's it. So first of all, we're gonna use their user ID to search what their username is. So we can go user, user equals new, new user, oops, new user. And we're gonna do four, data snapshot, DS, data snapshot. Uh, we need child, and this is where we use our uh, users node, string dot database name, users, there we go, and then if ds dot get key, look get key dot equals the user ID, which I don't have, uh, I need to declare this, and I also need to use get children on that. So we're going to create a global variable for the user ID, let's just go up here, private string user ID, and inside the Firebase authentication method here is where we will set that. So user ID equals user get UID. And then we can go back up here and say if the key equals the user ID, then we know we found the user we're looking for. So we can go set username ds get value user dot class and dot get username. Too many brackets. Okay. So that will get the username, and then we can compare that with what is actually in the text field. So we can go here, we can go current username, 
equals user dot get username. And so now we have, I guess, a couple cases. If the username is there, current one, then no changes have been made. Uh, actually, I guess I already wrote that out, didn't I? Case one here. And in that case, so if user dot get username dot equals the username that we got from the text field above, we know that that is in fact the case. Um, then we can have an else, it's not the case. So we'll do that with case two here. And this is gonna be a good place to stop. And the next one we're gonna have to write a lot of methods for checking for uniqueness in the Firebase database. So I think I'll stop here and in the next one, we will check for uniqueness for that username. I'll see you in the next video.